Mere reversion strategies should be a part of any trader's portfolio because they tend to have high win rate and generate lots of trades, especially short-term mean reversion strategies. Now, the RSI indicator is one of the best indicators to exploit this tendency for the indexes to mean revert all the time. In fact, if you don't currently trading a profitable RSI strategy, Please go to my YouTube channel and search for the RSI2 strategy and you will see many videos on the topic so it should be very easy for you to design and trade a profitable strategy. Now the other day I was designing a new strategy using the RSI and it hits me that the RSI using the average of the changes of over a period of time and I thought well why don't we use momentum instead of averaging. So first, let me show you how the RSI is calculated so you know what I'm talking about. The RSI formula is very simple. It's 100 minus 100 divided by 1 plus average gain divided by average loss. Really, the 100 minus 100 over 1 plus, all is this doing is just creating an oscillator. But the calculation really is about this, the average gain divided by the average loss. So the RSI is the average gain divided by the average loss of a certain period of time. So for example, the RSI 2, just calculating the average gain and dividing it by the average loss over the last two bars. And then the 100 thingy is just creating an oscillator of that value. So instead of dividing the average gain by the average loss, I thought of how about we create a pure momentum mean? So this is the simple indicator, which is we calculate the close minus the previous close divided by the previous close. So we will get a percentage every day of how much the market moved in terms of close to close. I multiply this by 100 and here is the indicator. So this is the S&P 500 and here is the RSI 2 with 20 and 80 uh, thresholds. And this is our new indicator. So the indicator is calculating the close percentage up and down every day. Now, when I thought about creating this indicator, really I was thinking of a pullback. I want to have another way to measure the pullback because at the end of the day, that's what the RSI is doing. It's measuring the pullback over a certain number of bars. Now, if we look at the indicator, we can see the peaks matches the peaks the troughs matches the troughs, but the problem is there is a lot of noise here. So the next step I wanted to do is now to rank this percentage change. So let's say if today we have a four point change over yesterday, we want to rank this change over a period of time. This percent change every day that we are calculating, we need to rank it in a certain number of bars. So if we are looking at 10 bars, then we want to rank where this percent change sits. Is it in the bottom, in the middle, in the top? If it's in the top, that means we are overbought. And if it's in the bottom, that means we are oversold. So basically we are creating an oscillator out of this value. So now I will teach you a very simple trick to make an oscillator out of any value. Currently we are calculating the changes every day. So this is the C change. If you deduct the lowest low of the C change over a look back period, and then you divide that by the highest minus the lowest, you will get an oscillator between zero and one. And if we multiply by 100, that means we will get an oscillator between zero and 100. This trick you can apply to any value you want to make an oscillator out of it. And here at the top, I just want to check that there is no zero value, so we don't divide by zero. Okay, so we can see now the red value is the C rank, which is now oscillating between zero and 100. And that's why you see this one, the yellow line, which is the old rank. And let's comment that. So this is now our new indicator trying to make a better evaluation of the pullback than the RSI2. Now we can see this also has a lot of noise even now that we rank it. So then the next step is to make a moving average out of that just to smooth it out. Okay, so I added the smooth average. So we are smoothing this value, the red line over three periods and this is the variable for three periods. And now we're plotting in cyan. So if we compile this, and now you can see a smoother line than the red line. So we have peaks at certain times, drops, but usually we are sitting somewhere in the middle. And now we can use this 
instead of the RSI 2 to see what can we do for me reverting strategy. Now you might ask why go through all this trouble to create a new indicator while we have the RSI 2 and many others. In fact, I have a whole series of algo versus crop just to measure the oscillators and the best way to use them on instruments. The reason is you want to create an indicator that have a different profile than the RSI 2. So I like the RSI 2 very much, but what if I just want a different profile? Even if I'm making the same amount of money on a strategy, but instead of let's say having a drawdown in 2008, I want to have a drawdown in 2010. And then I can mix and match these strategies to have a smoother equity line. And of course, the best way to find out is to test the indicator. So here is the final version of the indicator. The indicator uses two inputs, the rank length, which is we are ranking over how many bars, and then the smooth average, which is how many periods we will smooth this indicator. So here is the indicator now plotted with the RSI and now we can see we are definitely matching the RSI. So this signal matches this one, but we miss these two. So it's definitely having fewer signals than the RSI 2, but would it be better or worse or probably even the same as the RSI 2? Let's test it in a strategy. So here I have the same chart. This is the S&P 500 since 1998 using the future contract at ES. And the strategy here is the RSI 2. So we buy whenever the RSI 2 dips below 25 and we sell above 75. And this is the same uh, S&P 500 data, but now I'm using the KCC percent, which stands for close uh, percent change and we will be using the same levels 25 to buy and 75 to exit so what we will do is we will create an optimization to see the whole range of strategy so for the rsi2 we will optimize the rsi2 look back from 2 to 10 and we will optimize the entry level 5 to 30 step 5 and exit 70 to 95 step 5 so that's total 324 combinations and if we optimize that, so here I sorted by the best, we have 190,000. And let's see how many strategies making, let's say, a cutoff of 50,000. So this is 206. So 206 divided by 324. So that's 63% of strategies making above $50,000. Now we want to go a step further, which is what we are interested in. So yes, I want to see how many strategies made 50,000, but also I want to see the drawdown. So how many strategies made less than $50,000 maximum drawdown? And now we have 37 strategies that making above 50,000, but also losing less than 50,000. So 37 divided by 324, so that's 11 and a half percent. So about 63 percent of strategies making above $50,000 and about 11 percent of strategies making better return to drawdown, better than one basically the ratio. So now let's look at my indicator KCC percent and let's see the optimization here. Now here we will have more iterations, but we are looking at the same percentage. So the look back period 2 to 10, but here I have smoothing length and we can go one to seven actually seven is too much so let's go one to five and then the entry five to thirty step five and exit 70 to 95 step five so same thing we have 1620 combinations so let's optimize that and now let's see how many strategies above 50 so we have 1227 so 1227 divided by 1620 i think so here we have 75% of strategies making above $50,000. And again, let's look at the filter now. Remember, we are using the same uh, chart, so same data. And uh, now we have 407, 407 divided by 1620. And now we have 25% of strategies making a ratio of better than one, return to drawdown ratio. Basically, we are making minimum 50 and we are losing maximum 50. And that's what I am actually looking for. The whole purpose of creating this new indicator is to get a better 
return to drawdown ratio. I'm happy even with the same amount of money that I'm making in RSI2 just if I can decrease the amount of maximum drawdown. Or even if I have the same drawdown, I can still use this indicator if the profile is different, meaning if it's losing in a different year than the RSI2. But obviously I am making more money and lower drawdown. In both cases, I'm beating the RSI2. So let's look at this now because you might say, well, this is, you know, rigged and I picked the best uh, numbers for the S&P 500. So now we need to test on a portfolio to see the behavior of this indicator versus the RSI2. So here I have two portfolios. Portfolio one consists of 15 ETF instruments and four futures. The futures consist of the U.S. indexes, which we know they are mere reverting. And the ETF, some of them are the indexes, some of them are countries, and some of them are sectors, and one of them is gold. So we have really a good combination to test our strategies. So this one on the right, we are using the RSI2, and the one on the left, we are using the KCC%. Percent. So here is the performance of the RSI2 versus KCC%. Percent. First of all, we make extremely close amount of money. Look at this, $1,799. <laughs> and this is $1,609. It looks rigged, but believe me, it's not. I just, I just, it just came up with this number. But here is what's most important. Return on maximum portfolio drawdown is two, and this one is 3.21. Even if I'm making the same amount of money, but I have a better profile in terms of return to drawdown ratio. Of course, this will make a difference also in the number of years. And we can check this if we go to the annual period analysis. So again, this is the RSI2 and this is KCC percent. And while yes, we make the same losing year. So look at this 2014 we lose here. 2014 we make actually a lot of money 41. But 2018, even though, remember, the end, we are making the same amount of money. But 2018, we're losing 64 in KCC percent indicator, but we are losing double in the RSI2. And in 2022, so far, we are losing again double in the RSI2 versus KCC percent. And of course, this will show up in the graph. So you can see the RSI2 have a huge dip here in 2020 and the maximum amount here is about $300,000 while here we reach uh, about $480,000. So while we're making the same amount of money, this is a much better uh, equity curve than the RSI2. Then if we do the overview, which is breakdown by symbol and look at this, how amazing is this? The RSI2 since 1999. Now, of course, these uh, ETFs, uh, some of them created later on. So, for example, this one started 2006, this one 2002, this one 2003. But still, all of them are profitable. Isn't this amazing? Same thing with KCC percent. It's the same data, and again, they're all profitable. And now we look at the correlation. So, this is remember the RSI two here, the KCC percent here. We are making same amount of money. KCC percent is low win rate, but also lower maximum drawdown. But now something really different pops up. The EWH and SPY is 20% positively correlated. But here EWH and SPY is negatively correlated 20%. And you can see this difference all over the place in both portfolios. Sometimes significant, sometimes not as much. XLE and diamonds, which is the Dow, is 50% correlation, while the XLE in KCC percent is negatively correlated 10%. That's a huge, huge difference between the two. So this doesn't mean that the KCC percent indicator is the best indicator out there. In fact, this is just like my market regime indicator, which is included in the Algo Trading Masterclass. It's not the best out there, but it's something different. And this indicator again is doing something different. So you get a better uh, equity profile than the, let's say, normal RSI2, which is one of the best indicators to do mere reversion strategy. The code for the indicator, of course, you saw it on the screen, but if you don't want to type it or you want to use the function in the strategy, it will be available with the strategy in the Discord channel. Now, of course, I can 
use this indicator in a different direction. For example, I can make it behave like MACD, which basically I use two averages, deduct them and put a histogram, blah, blah, blah. And then the signal will be crossing the zero line and crossing below the zero line and so on and so forth. If you like to see that, please comment below the video and I'll be happy to make that video. To learn more, make sure to watch these videos and I will see you there.